Welcome to today's video. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create your own Amazon attribution links in your Amazon Seller Central account. Everything step-by-step. -step. And some of you already know that I created a tutorial a few months ago. And since that video has been created, Amazon has recently changed the way that you actually create attribution um, links. I actually think that they've improved upon um, the user experience. We're gonna cover everything here. Should be relatively short. So if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment with questions, and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and Amazon and e-commerce content. All right, so let's get to it. Step number one, what you wanna do is log in to your Amazon Seller Central account. Once you've done that, go up to the top left-hand side, click on the dropdown. Once you've done that, click on advertising. All right, then click on measure non-Amazon ads. Measure non-Amazon ads. All right, once we've done that, click on visit the advertising console because now Amazon attribution is actually a part of your Amazon advertising console or dashboard. So we're gonna go ahead and click. All right, and that'll take us to our Amazon attribution dashboard. Here we can create all of our attribution links, very similar to how you create a campaign and ad groups with Amazon PPC. It's gonna be a very similar process. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and click on create campaign button on the left-hand side. Once you've done that, you have the option to either create manually or upload a file. I prefer to do things manually. It helps me to make sure that I'm doing every step correctly. So that's just personally what I prefer. So that's what this tutorial will be. And this is how I envision most sellers actually using this. So go ahead and click on create manually. All right, once we do that, we'll move on to the next step. So here we're going to create our campaign. Step one is the name. So it's completely up to you, but here's something to kind of consider with your nomenclature is to include your product and then the channel. So to keep it really simple, what we would do here is I would have, you know, product name, whatever that is, dash, and then, you know, Google ads, okay? Or Pinterest or Instagram influencer, or if there's a certain influencer and you wanna track those results, then um, you could include that here. So product name, dash, and then the, um, sales channel is what I would recommend. Okay. And you'll see why in a second. So put in a name, you can leave external ID um, blank, scroll down next here in this section, you're actually going to select your product. And what's really cool and something I want to point out is you can either add an individual ASIN or if your particular um, listing, right? Your product has multiple product variations. You can add those variations as well. I would encourage you personally that if your product has variations, that you would add those variations because, right, you want to track your results um, of all of your off Amazon efforts, you know, to your Amazon listing. But also there's the brand referral bonus program where currently Amazon is giving up to 10% of the sale price for any sale that you make outside of Amazon. So if someone, you know, clicks on your link and then maybe buys a variation, but that's not really tracked with Amazon attribution, maybe that really won't go through. So just to make sure that everything goes through in case someone clicks on my link, goes to my Amazon product listing, and they, doesn't, they don't buy that specific product that I originally was gonna have, they buy one of the other you know, variations, then I wanna make sure that those are all kind of tracked. So if your product has variations, you have the option to click on add variations, consider doing that. Otherwise, if you don't have any variations, just go ahead and select whatever product. And again, this is gonna be one product. So each campaign, basically it's gonna be, like I said, your product name and then the channel. So you're gonna have, for example, let's say, you know, a succulent holder, Google ads. Then you're gonna have another campaign, succulent holder, Pinterest ads. Then another one, succulent holder, you know, TikTok influencer, right? And so on, okay? Whatever and how granular you wanna get is totally up to you. That's how I'd recommend structuring. So you're gonna have multiple campaigns for one product uh, and then you're gonna have multiple campaigns for your second product, multiple campaigns for your third and so on. Instead of messing everything together, I find that is the best organization in general. So we're gonna go ahead and add a product here and click on add. All right, now that our product is added, and I recommend only doing you know, one type, scroll down until we get to the ad group section. So similar, right, you're gonna have your campaign. And then within that campaign, you can have multiple ad groups. So here in this section, what I'd recommend doing is, and I would encourage you to do this, is A-B test you know, pretty much everything, right? Test everything. What does that mean? So if you're running, let's say again, with the example of Google ads, okay, then with your Google ads, attribution campaign, maybe you create one ad group uh, is, you know, add one, add uh, group two is add two, right? So it's, you know, for example, in Google ads, you have one Google ad campaign and you're A-B testing two different ads. You're trying to find which ad performs better. 
Maybe with your Google ad, you have two different ad groups. You have one set of keywords for, for ad group A, another group for ad B, and then each of those ad groups has two. So maybe you have two different types of ad groups. So you can get really, really, you know, create a lot of different ad groups here within your single kind of campaigns. Or to keep it simple, you're testing two different Google ads within your Google ad campaign. Another example could be you have one TikTok influencer campaign. Within that, you could have, you know, you know, influencer number one as an ad group. Influencer number two is another ad group. Influencer number three. So it's up to you how to structure. This is personally how I structure my own and I will be here in the future. So that's just something to kind of consider. So in this ad group, sticking in line with it, it'll be same. I'd say product name, just so that product is always there. And then, you know, Google ads. And then what is the unique differentiation here, right? It, it could be, you know, ad A, or it could be ad group A, ad group B, and then ad A, ad group B, whatever, right? So I'm gonna have ad A, all right? Select my publisher. Here in the drop down, click on select publisher and then start typing in your channel. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna do Google. And as you can see, we have Google AdWords, Google Preferred, Google Display Network, uh, Google Double Click Bid Manager. So we're gonna select Google AdWords. For this case, it's Google Ads or Google AdWords. Right, I'm gonna exit this real quick just to show you all of the options you have for publishers. So we see you know, answers.com, Bing, Buzzfeed, scroll down even more, eBay, Facebook, um, you know, Google AdWords as we already saw and so on. So a lot of options here, PayPal even, interesting. So a lot of different options you have here. So uh, again, we're gonna scroll back up. We're gonna click on Google, there we go, AdWords, select that. For a channel, uh, this will depend on your publisher. Hit the drop down. In this case, we only have search, right? Google search ads, okay? If you change the publisher, then your channel will also change. Then here for the click-through URL, you wanna make sure that you include the clean URL for your listing, okay? So basically, when someone clicks on this link, where do you wanna send them? And it should be your Amazon product detail page, okay? And I'll show you an example of what that looks like here. So in this case, if this is our product that we're sending traffic to and it's a succulent holder, uh, what a lot of people mess up is they kind of find their product on Amazon, copy the entire URL, and then paste it in um, as the destination URL. What you want to make sure that you do is go up here to the search bar, right, for your um, listing, okay? And if we really quickly look, what we want to do is start here at the beginning, all the way at the beginning, HTTPS, right? And we want to copy all the way over to after your um, ASIN. So ASIN B01KEM and so on, right? And you want to make sure that you also get that kind of backslash that you see here. So this, I'm going to copy this, okay, real quick. I'm going to go back to uh, attribution, all right? And now I'm going to paste, okay? Just so you can kind of see it. And I'm going to zoom out here. So you can kind of see the, the click-through URL, okay? You want the clean product listing URL right here, okay? And I'm going to kind of try to scroll over just to show you that always you want to end right here at this, you know, you, have, you see your ASIN and then that slash, and right there, okay, that's the clean URL. So what's a dirty URL, right, if this is clean? Okay, really quick, we can go back one more time. And once we're here, as you can see, um, in this case, how I found this product is I went to Amazon, I typed in the keyword succulent holder. So you see what happens is in this URL, we have keyword equals succulent plus holder. Now you may be thinking, oh, Sumner, should I use a two-step URL in my Amazon attribution? Another reason I wanna make this video is absolutely not. Um, if you haven't already heard, Amazon is already cracking down on any seller using two-step URLs, ranking URLs, rebates, all that sort of thing, any form of ranking manipulation. So if you were to copy this entire URL and paste it into your attribution to create a link, Amazon could actually flag you for ranking manipulation because this URL contains keywords equal succulent holder. So Amazon's kind of, it's like you're trying to rank for those keywords, succulent holder, and it has some other messy data that you can obviously kind of see through in here, but to keep things simple, you know, wherever you see your ASIN right here and then up until that backslash, that's where you want to copy. So again, I'm just going to do this again just to show you. Boom. That's what we want to copy and paste. Get rid of everything else. I think I'm pretty clear on that. So we're good. Okay. Uh, to finish up, back to attribution. Okay. Once we are here, so let's say, hey, I only have one, you know, Google ad, you know, for my campaign. Okay. Then you just have one ad group, right? Again, if you're A-B testing, which I would recommend, then you wanna create your next ad group. So to do that, all you need to do is click on uh, add new ad group. So we got click new ad group, scroll down. All right, once we're here, again, product, oops, product name dash uh, Google ads. So pretty much the same as the campaign, then plus 
the differentiator. So add B, okay? Selecting a publisher. And actually in this case, just to show you before I do. So I could select Pinterest and then the channel would be different. But again, that's not what we're, I just want to show you. Uh, but that's what we're doing, right? This is all for Google Ads. So we, again, we do Google AdWords, okay? Select the channel. It's only search. Got it. Um, and in this case, right, we're A-B testing the Google ads, but our Google ads both go to the same destination. So again, all I can do is just go up here to the previous click-through URL. I'm going to copy this, Command-C to copy, and then Command-V to paste down here because because it's the same destination URL or click-through URL, right? So if I hover over this, the destination URL, when someone clicks, where do you want to take them? Awesome. And if you have more ad groups, keep adding those ad groups. But in this case, if we only have these two, we are done. So now that we're done, what do we do? We go ahead and click on create. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. Just make sure that you're done. And there we go. So we now have our, what's really key here are our attribution tags. So you can kind of see, you can see the campaign that you created, the ad group, the publisher, the channel, and then here is your attribution tag. Well, what's a tag? It's a URL, okay? This is the URL that we want to use. So when we're setting up our Google ads in this case, okay, we want to make sure that we are using um, this URL right here. Now, be careful if we scroll over a little bit, you see the click-through URL. You don't use the click-through URL. The click-through URL is just your product URL. That's all it is. There's no, you're not going to track anything. Nothing's going to get tracked. It's just your URL. You want the tracking URL, also known as the attribution tag. So what we're going to do is for, right, our Google, our, our Google ad, ad A, we are going to copy, hold on, Oop. we're going to copy this whole attribution tag right here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to make sure I use that as my destination URL for my advertising, for my influencer partnerships, for my press release, whatever I'm doing that I'm driving traffic. Okay. And then I'm going to use this one here for ad B. What I like to do personally is I like to have a Google sheet where I keep all of this data. So I have, you know, kind of like my product, my campaign, my ad group, and then my URL and my click through URL all there, all in one Google sheet helps me kind of keep track of everything really quick for me to go in instead of having to go to um, Amazon attribution dashboard, but it's up to you. It's just for me to save time and kind of put everything into one place all at once instead of having to like click into each campaign and so on. So um, there you go. If you want to create a new campaign, you'll just click, go back to your campaign list. Once you're there, click on create campaign, rinse and repeat with as many kind of uh, channels that you want with as many products as you like. My recommendation, any product that you're sending external traffic, Make sure you create uh, at least one attribution link. Again, number one, to kind of track at least some of the results from your efforts. And then number two, to take advantage of the Amazon brand referral bonus. Again, where Amazon can give you up to 10% of any sale that you bring them outside of Amazon. Okay, so really powerful. And um, obviously, as you, know, you start getting some more data, it'll all show up within your Amazon attribution dashboard right there at the beginning, kind of where we started. So... Uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. Hope you found it valuable. Like I said, if you have questions, if I missed anything or maybe I skipped over something, let me know in the comment section below. And if you liked it, found it helpful and no one else is making videos like this, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more Amazon FBA content. And if you're interested in learning six different, easy, profitable ways to drive more traffic to your listing, more ways you can actually use your attribution URLs, then be sure to check out our Amazon product launch secrets course, which you can get for literally less than $20 for a limited time. Promo code will be in the description with more details and all of that in case you're interested. And regardless, as always, thank you so much for watching. God bless. Look forward to seeing you in future videos.